issues because you, you mentioned that leaving Islam was such uh, was such a major change, was such a you know a, a difficult step to make. Uh, what were, if you had to list some of the main, you know, some of the main reasons, what would be some, kind of the big issues that pushed you over pushed that you edge? Over that. I mean, I think, it, I think that it was a couple of reasons. Uh, the, the, the first and foremost reason was uh, due to my education in psychology and my pursuit in, for, in a career in mental health. I was, de I was dealing with a lot of people who, who, who are suffering. You know, people were self-mutilating, cutting themselves, suicidal ideation, uh, you know, all kinds of, you know, mental and psychological disturbances. And so I saw a lot of suffering, and I thought about them, and I thought about a lot of, you know, just general humanity. Uh, and I thought about, you know, what Islam, uh, you know, says about them in general, that their lives are a waste because they're not you know, bowing to Allah five times a day, saying stuff in Arabic and growing their beards and their women aren't wearing hijab, as if that is the purpose for why God <laughs> created them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and on top of that, that their destiny is going to be, as chapter 4, verse 56 says, that their skin is going to be burned off and replaced with new skin yeah. uh, endlessly, an actual physical endless torture that they're going, that they're going to go through. And I think it was a combination of putting all of that together uh, that open up all of the other issues that, for example, that I've been reading about and, and even debating about with you, with you guys and other people, you know, stuff like Abdullah ibn Abi said and, and, and uh, you know, Zainab's marriage to, to, and the satanic verses and, you know, the list could go on and on about the controversial things about Muhammad ibn Abdullah uh, and, and, and his companions. But that was the big thing that, that, that came at me um, was, was understanding the intense indoctrination Literally, it's one of it's probably the most intense and most disturbing indoctrination that that exists on our planet today, and it gets people to to, to act violently and viciously and oppress people and want to implement Sharia law. This is what that type of what this is what this type of indoctrination does. Even if you think that that we can reinterpret Islam, we can you know. We, Islam can 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 be reinterpreted in a peaceful way, where where we can focus on all of the positive verses. There is still a massive element there, and there's there, there's plenty of verses in hadith to support it that get Muslims to do crazy things. And he, and I, everyone sees it. I mean, even the Muslims see it. They just turn see it. They're just turning a blind eye to it because they're emotionally attached, like I was, you know, to their identity as a Muslim. And here's and here's my, my my message to the Muslims is that look I I understand that you're emotionally attached and you and, and that you have this love for your religion, but 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 there is so much else that, about Islam that's detrimental to broader humanity and that 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 there needs to be a movement uh, of, of people speaking against against an idea that's very dangerous for society and I didn't realize that until recently and and and, and you know to be liberated from it from from it I could only want that for, for for so many even you know when I see you know when I see Muslims now you know as, as an apostate I see these bearded guys and these women wearing the niqab you know before I used to be like mashallah you know they're they're, they're, they're so much into the deen I want me and my wife my Sunni Muslim wife that I want wanted you know I want to be like that you know what I mean and now when I see it, it it breaks my heart you know even if they think even if they convince themselves that this is you know that 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 this is good for them you know even if they think that it's good for them you know what I mean it still breaks my heart to see them th th them you know being lured by by this ideal by by this ideology when when they could be so much more of a human being than that <clears throat> I, I wanted, I wanted to ask a question to Farhan and then one for you. But Farhan, you kept mentioning Abdullah ibn Abisar, and you also mentioned the story of Zainab. Now, there are some people who may be tuning in for the first time, have no clue what you're talking about. In fact, as you are well aware, there are even a lot of Muslims who have no idea about the incident with Abdullah ibn Abisar, as well as Zainab. Can you briefly touch on those two uh, incidents because those were some of the things that troubled you? What was it about? <clears throat> <clears throat> Abdullah ibn Abisar that troubled you and what was it about Zainab that troubled you could you elaborate briefly and then I'll have a question for you about why what troubled you enough to leave Islam mm -hmm. so uh, sure, sure. Uh, and I brought up uh, uh, the story of uh, uh, Abdullah ibn Abisar before and in, in, in other dialogues that I've had and, and the reason why that one disturbs me the most 
um, is because he, he was receiving the revelation, you know, Muhammad ibn Abdullah was receiving, uh, you know, revelation from Allah. I think it was Surah Al-Mu'minun. And, and, you know, and, and Abdullah was able to, you know, add, you know, as he wanted to, 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 the, to, the, to the book of Allah. And, and that frustrated him to the point that he apostated from Islam. And then, you know, and then a death sentence was, was sent by Muhammad. Uh, and and uh, you know Uthman had to you know per, get, get convince Muhammad not to kill him. In order to convince Muhammad not to kill him, they had to coerce him to convert back to Islam. I mean that was just it was altogether a disturbing story that you know that that really you know shook me. You know when I actually did the research behind it. Um, and the story but of Zainab quickly. that was something that they. Yeah, before you get okay. to sign up, real quickly, so just so I can understand what you're saying, and this is for the benefit of the audience, you're telling me that this, this gentleman named Abdullah ibn Abisar would actually change the messages that Muhammad claimed he was receiving from Allah, which led to his apostasy because any sensible person would conclude like he did, wait, Muhammad, if you're telling me what you're writing down or asking me to write down are revelations from God, there is no way that I can influence you to change those revelations. Is that what happened? Yeah, he was actually adding to the verses. Like, for mm -hmm. example, Muhammad would finish f finish an ayah, and Abdullah ibn Abi Sa'id would say that something that rhymes with it. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was profound. And Muhammad was like, yeah, go ahead and write that. Mm -hmm. um, and... Um, it seems that his reasoning it seems that his reasoning is is exactly parallel to the Muslim who who might think about the story today. In other words, if you're Abdullah, you're thinking, uh, wait a minute. If I mean, if this guy's a prophet, then I'm a prophet too because I'm saying things and and he's writing them down as revelations of the Quran. Um, but a Muslim today can and he left Islam over that. He left Islam. He yeah, said, look, possibly, if, right. there's no way this guy's a prophet, or I wouldn't be allowed to change his revelations. But I am allowed to change the revelations. And therefore, this guy can't. This 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 message can't be from God. But a Muslim can look at that exact and may and have that exact same reasoning. Wait a minute. I believe the Quran is this perfect word of God, and yet there was a guy, one of Muhammad's scribes, who could improve it. Yes. Who could yes. improve it? Muhammad says, "Yeah, write it, write it that way." Not yeah. inspired. But what if someone says, "Hold on, Quran. Now that, those are fabricated stories. They're not based on authentic uh, Sunni sources." Now I'm sure you've come with come up. Uh, have met Muslims who've used that argument. So didn't you entertain that idea as you were studying that story? Didn't you think that maybe this, these are fraudulent tales and therefore they don't hold any weight as far as Sunni Islam is concerned? If so, then how did you deal with that? Well, I mean, I, I, did, think that, I did think that for a while. And a matter of fact, I was finding ways and I was finding the typical arguments you know, against that, that, that it was fabricated, this is not from an authentic source. Um, you, you know, stuff, j j just a typical Muslim response. You know, I mean, th this is a typical response that Muslims give. You know, the, what, what you're saying is that, oh, th this is this is not fabricated and stuff like that. But there's so many stories like this about Muhammad that they consider fabricated. First of all, why do these fabrications even exist? Exactly. Second of all, I think David Wood made an excellent point uh, w w when he debated Robert Spencer w w in terms of the principle of, embar of embarrassment. Why even narrate this in the first place? Exactly. And then on top of that, you know, there's so many other incidents like the satanic verses, you know, is another perfect example of, uh, of this. Um, and, and it has like over 30, you know, chains of narration leading to it. You know what I mean? And why would people fabricate this? You know what I mean? About their beloved. Exactly. You know what I mean? And so, I mean, again, it took me... <clears throat> One of the things that make me doubt Islam is that the Quran says it uh, confirms the before scriptures uh, that uh, basically the Bible is all his book and uh, in Quran 1094 tells Muslims to go come to me actually for my reading the before scriptures and all Muslims believe the Bible is corrupted plus there's the fact that the Quran not not the Quran but Muhammad says in uh, a hadith I believe it's a uh, Uh, Al-Tabari, yeah, Al-Tabari, that the earth is spread out on the back of a giant fish, giant agitated fish, called Nun. Of course, it has some other names, too. And that's the reason why Allah, in the Quran, casts up 
put down mountains as pegs to keep the earthquakes down from being on that giant fish. Yeah. We're not on a giant fish, you know? So that's one of the things that one of the things that make me doubt Islam by 